Hi, welcome to my analytics channel. For this demonstration, I will show you on how to build your support vector machine model. But before that, let us first uh, know the brief introductory of this uh, support vector machine algorithm. Actually, a uh, support vector machine algorithm is one of the most used algorithm for classification and regression analysis. And it indeed made a significant accuracy result based on the studies conducted. In fact, the support vector machine made significant achievement and greater applicability in various applications. Okay, now let's build our model. Okay, let's uh, build our model here in our Rapid Miner Studio 8.2. Okay, first thing to do is you need to uh, click this new process, then select this blank process. And for this demonstration, we will be using the data here in our Rapid Miner platform because Rapid Miner provide a sample data sets. Okay, so to uh, find your sample data sets, all you have to do just to click this particular icon. Then you can have here a data set sample of our Rapid Miner platform. Okay, for this demonstration, we will be uh, utilizing this uh, sonar data sets and drag it here to our process area. Then um, let's try to check this data set what's inside of this data set try to run it okay then you have here your data sets as you can see we have a total of 208 samples here and we have uh, 60 regular attributes and we have here one special attribute so this particular attribute is the classification of this attributes okay these are the features of the attribute uh, rock and we have another attribute here i think that we have two attributes the mine attribute okay we use this data to check okay uh, how our support vector machine classify this uh, data sets let's move to our design then you have to uh, disconnect this first okay then let's try to check how our um, data sets are mapped into the feature space okay so that we can uh, define uh, determine the um, vectors or the support vector okay let's try to run support vector machine support vector machine Okay, let's try to check and then just to just connect that one and connect it to the result and let's try to run it first okay by clicking that button and we are we are prompted here with the result okay this is the result of our kernel model okay as you can see we have a total of uh, 208 and we have here the bias okay this bias is very important because this is one of the parameter in computing the hyperplane or determining the margin uh, for the support vector machine to classify the data sets okay so this data set are presented in order so we have here our attribute one until to attribute 60 okay so and it's already computed a bias of point uh, 21 okay then let's now go back to our design to build our model okay just uh, remove this part because we will apply the cross validation okay let's apply our cross validation operator Okay, what's the uh, use of this cross-validation uh, operator? Uh, actually, this is a standard approach of validating your predictive model. Just connect it first here. Okay, then um, 
later we'll connect that to our model okay but we we have to know about this cross validation as i've said this is a standard approach or validating any predictive model and this particular method make full of use of your data without clicking information into the training phase and the method for this cross validation is this cross validation make a division of your data sets based on the k value that you're going to set later okay so you can set the um uh, the k fold value of our um cross validation operator and um of course what uh the good thing of this uh fold or k value fold is every k part okay will test to those model always on the remaining part of the data and this will guarantee that there is no overlap between the training and your testing data sets okay so that's how uh cross validation perform the data sets Okay, now let's um, double click this one and replace our support vector okay, algorithm to our training interface. Okay, as you can see, when we click our cross validation, double click, then you are prompted to the uh, two interfaces. We have here the training and the testing. So your SBM will be placed here in our, the training part of the interface. Then you have to make a connection and create your model here to that port. And now we like to know the, um, the performance of this, but we need first to apply the model. Okay, so let's apply model the model here and make a connection then of course your testing model then you have to check the performance of that model so you have to apply the uh, performance classification okay apply the performance classification then you have to connect your label here and uh, performance okay then after that since we have already made the connection you have to click on this part for you to go back to this okay interface where our cross validation is placed this operator we will decide what is our expected result okay for this model of course we need to check the result of our model just connect that then our testing model you can also check okay our result if you want then you can connect this one to this port if you want to know the uh, cross validation okay let's try let's uh, connect so that you have uh, result of your cross validation okay then since we have there's no problem okay there's no problem with the connection okay then you can run your model by clicking this one as you can see we have here the result of our cross validation as you can see we have here our attribute our performance we have 78.86 and we have our kernel model okay let us make some modification of our support vector machine model all you have to do just uh, select your support vector machine then you can view your parameters here okay so as you can see our kernel type okay for this data set is linear other uh, kernel type and this are nonlinear. Okay, based on my readings that this particular radial and polynomial uh, mark a good result in in body studies. 
okay but um let's sorry then um, this particular uh, part is you can make some uh, adjustment if you want but rapid minor provide you the optimum result of the optimal results of your data sets but you can uh, you can change this you can modify this one okay as you can see our result is um, our performance result is 78.86 then if we do some modification of this value okay let's uh, say uh, 0.5 because this particular part this is a constant value where you can set the tolerance of your misclassification okay of your data sets that allows the boundaries lower values create a harder boundaries and the um, okay let's try to uh, change this one and check how this uh, changes um affect to our performance classif uh, performance accuracy okay let's run okay so we have here our then let's check as you can see our accuracy performance decreased to 70.74 percent unlike the previous result we have 78 okay so i think that uh modifying our constant is not a good model okay so let's stick to our previous um constant value for our support vector parameter okay because uh, as i've said the rapid minor will automatically provide you the optimal result okay so you can do some connection here this is how amazing rapid miner it allows you to uh, verify and validate if you made some changes of the parameter for you to discover what's the effect how it will change the performance accuracy okay let's go back to the uh, design because i i want to check on the cross validation result okay let's check because what we have here we have only this one example set of our cross validation we have here the kernel model where we have here the values of our vectors we have 60 right this is the value of our vectors then we have the performance but we don't have yet the how the um, rapid minor or our support vector machine determine that this particular attribute is a support vector or not okay to do that is you have to go to your uh, testing and connect this part okay this one testing okay this is our testing model okay then run it and now this we have here our um, our example cross validation unlike this one okay we have that only for this one we have here our prediction and our confidence okay as you can see that this particular okay attributes is okay a rock then we have here a mine and predicted as a mine for so our result. Let's say we have five number of folds, then try to run our result for this one. Okay, this is the last execution result. Let's try to check. Okay, so we have here 77.84 still uh the performance accuracy shows a decrease of the one percent because our previous um result the first uh, result that we have is 78 percent okay based on the number of folds then and we use a constant of zero so um you can also check the chart for this uh result Okay, this is how our 
data sets are mapped into the feature space as you can see so then um, we have here the statistics so you can okay that one we have here the data and let's try to check our cross or our cardinal model okay then uh, let's try to uh, determine so what are those attributes that is I that are identified as support vector or not a support vector okay to uh, know that you have to click on the support vector table then you can now have your here okay the, the label for that per this particular uh, uh, value is a support vector the other one is not a support vector Okay, as you can see, because not all data sets are support vector. So what are those support vector? Those support vector are the nearest to the other class. Since this data set, uh, we have only two classes here. So we have the rock and the mine. So therefore, this particular um, value, okay, number 20, is not a support vector. So the use of identifying or, determ or determining the support vector is very important. Why? Because this support vector is uh, one of the parameters to determine the hyperplane. Okay, what is this hyperplane? Okay, the hyperplane is the margin to classify, to classify the... Uh, the data okay the what are the rock data and the mine data but of course there is a mathematical equation uh, how to arrive the computation of this this support vector machine if you want to really understand how it will be computed okay so i hope that you learned this simple demonstration okay and Thank you for watching.